Charters Towers, it's uh, I like it. It's, it's a, a Western town. It's um, it's an old it's an old Western town. Well, mining town really. At the time of Federation, Charters Towers was a thriving, prosperous city of 27,000 people. At midnight, 100 years ago, a torchlight procession made its way to the railway station to celebrate the Federation of Australia. On the following day, 6,000 people sat on the slopes of Lisner Park, looking forward to a musical program performed by local choirs and bands. Making music, song and dance were an integral part of Goldfield life. We just came right to the town about 12 o'clock last night just to see that there's a town that still has a character. The historic character was outstanding to me just to come into the city last night. So uh, congratulations on that. And I uh, just wanted to say one of the biggest things that keeps the community together is a sense of family, a sense of community that's still very special here, I can see that. And one of the biggest things that keeps that together is music and arts practice. Drama, music, dancing, singing. It's like the old days of sitting around the piano singing together. So give it your support. Music's a great thing. And you can see so many kids get joy out of it here. So many people bring people together. So keep at it. You should be proud of yourself. A hundred years later, in 2001, the people of Charters Towers dreamt of celebrating the centenary of Federation in just the same way with a concert of music. It would not be as easy to mount as it had been for their forebears, but the struggle to put on a concert in 2001 would divide and unite a community and prove in the end whether the same cultural spirit had survived. Today in Charters Towers, the city that had once proudly called itself the world, there are fewer than 10,000 people, and to stage an evening concert of popular classical tunes for the entire community, where the musicians would come from the local miners, graziers, tradespeople, schools, kindergartens, and old people's homes, was a daunting venture. Charter Stars, well people are amazed. They, they think, what in Charter Stars? They're in Charter Stars because I was invited to be up here to be musician in residence here for the Centenary of Federation Festival. Well we called it the world's greatest band. It's about a really fun and uplifting way of, of bringing community together and this for me was an opportunity for it to be really for using music as a means for, for having fun and, and well-being for a whole lot of people. I've never before on this scale say performers it's going to be people bringing anything that can make a noise shake rattle or anything people bring spoons from their cups or whatever you can live on the plains or the mountains or down where the sea breezes blow but you're still in view we're looking for a bass player anybody play tk's bass it's an earlier model it's a bushels you can travel on beautiful highways sometimes we use a stick to uh, do a different sound above on the skyway for the beauty below you will find white cotton green forests blue rivers sugar cane fields and fruit trees that bear the first verse goes when you drive on west from townsville there's a treat in store for you as the city of Charters towers looms up into view there's a grand old building standing it's not your average pub it's the pride of our heritage city, our unique civic club. 
and all the, the lighting is reflected down on, over the top of the pool table. The, the snooker table is directly underneath that dome. So it all adds to light as well as cool. These tables, they're not just sitting on the floor. That piece of lead sits on a, on a, a piece of timber which is sitting on a, a, a concrete base that goes down into the ground for a good solid foundation for the tables to sit on. So they, they've moved, these tables are well over 100 years old. They probably would never ever been shifted in the time that they were first put here. The sixth song I've written in this in this place, but it just it gives me that um, I don't know. I feel free in here. It feels good. Some fine examples of colonial architecture remain, but many of the buildings, hotels, miners' cottages, and Queenslanders were moved to other towns, pulled down, burnt to ash for insurance claims or left to the white ants. Many valuable antiques that exemplified the grandeur that was Charters Towers were sold to dealers and collectors throughout North Queensland. The words, it came from Charters Towers, still lend an antique authenticity and romance. The title came in the greatest band. It wasn't the largest band, but the greatest band, because I mean, having this incredible motley collection of instruments, all sorts of anything really that can make sound. I mean, you've got things like the trumpets, the usual kind of school band instruments. And then you've got many different things that people wouldn't really call of instruments. Of course, you've got cowbells coming. Uh, somebody's coming along and with a sledgehammer, breaking up old PCs. This is my house, Charters Towers, south of Charters Towers. I'm Pat Madigan, I work at uh, Bajinga Gold Mine, it's a process operator. I've been working there about 14 years. And on my days off, I still work in the uh, cattle industry. I've got a few cattle of my own, and uh, I still enjoy it very much. We came to Charters Towers in 1970 on a uh, station called Wonderbale and uh, I was off and on, been there for about 20 years. I spent eight years in the States, working around the States and came back and uh, took over running mustering camps and helicopter mustering for five years and the, the children had to go to us. Uh, the high school, so we moved to town, a good job in the mines. And uh, been working in the mines ever since. Yeah, well, going from the bush into the mines is a different, uh, it's a different style of life. And there's, I suppose the people are, are different too. And, uh, it's very, it's very hard for a while to um, adapt to the lifestyle. Money, good money. Mine does have good money. It's nearly, I suppose, twice as much as you would get on a station. The work isn't all that hard. Long hours. Shift work, uh, that was something I, um, I found hard for quite a while because uh, you got a certain time to do a job. If, uh, when the clock runs out, that's the end of the job. Where on stations you uh, work on a job, you finish it. But at a, on a mine site, it's the next person takes over from your shift and continues on with that job. 80 kilometres west of Charters Towers, you'll find Pajingo, Queensland's second largest gold producer. The underground mine is the joint venture of Newmont Australia and Newmont Mining Corporation. This mine supports the local community by contributing more than 10 million a year to the local economy through their 250 employees who reside in Charters Towers. If you've been working with it for so long, it doesn't mean a great deal. It's just another mineral. And uh, we often thought about getting a bar and putting it against it as a doorstop and see if how many people would notice that it was actually gold. industry and the cattle industry in particular has always been driven by lifestyle. Most people who work on the bush or especially in the cattle industry we do it because we like it. We like the land, we like the animals, 
We like our individualistic lifestyle, being able to make our own decisions. However, to be able to do that into the future, we have to be business people. We, we cannot just uh, afford to get up in the morning and hope to just chase a few cows that day. We have to manage the whole property in a holistic manner. We have to be aware of what the environment, we have to be aware of what our pastures and our ecosystems are doing here. We have to be aware of what the consumer wants on the other side of the world. The two things that affect us most is the weather and the global price, both of which we have no control over whatsoever. So everything else has to be managed within those two huge variables. Darrimple Shire is probably one of the most stable areas in a grazing area in Australia. You know, I'm, to qualify that, I mean um, a lot of the other areas in Australia are more corporatised in, in the western areas. They're more corporatised, whereas there's 320 beef properties in the Darrimple Shire, most of which are all owned by families. And some of us, you know, I'm a, I'm a third generation family on this one property. And in our area here, there's a lot of people that have been here three, two, three, up to four, up to five or six generations on, on, on properties. That stability means a lot for Charters Towers. I think if you've got people or families that have been in the area for, you know, 50 to 100 years, Charters Towers is their local place, their local town. They will always support it, not only by, uh, uh, supporting its businesses, but also supporting it in its social and cultural identity as well. To remind themselves why they had once laid claim to the grandiose title of the world, Charters Towers was to become for a week the thriving cultural heart of Queensland again. The Dalrymple Shire Council and the Charters Tower City Council planned a week of special events, including a reenactment of the setting of the gold price at the historic stock exchange. 11 shillings, 11 is class, brilliant, one and eightpence, and one and tenpence. Six dollars, three of Okay, who's got 120? Okay. So, then the Fourth generation of uh, butchering from the butchering family. We like the lifestyle of Charters Towers, the easygoing people. It's it's a fantastic place to bring up kids. The gold mining industry has no doubt been a boost to Charters Towers, but I can remember this is going back when I was a young fellow that there wasn't any mines, and it was a, a thriving town then, depending on the grazing industry uh, and the and the school system here with all the boarding colleges and that. Um, we survived before, and even though it's a, it's a huge part of the town now, I think the town will survive if, if something does happen to the mines. I've always liked music. Um, probably my era was the rock and roll, you know, but uh, <laughs> Melissa came along and into the trumpet and Stephen with his French horn and that and uh, I really enjoy the brass music, especially brass. Yes, he does lots for me. He, um, he's, I think he's really into music even though he doesn't play an instrument but he likes going around with the bands and stuff and he's a president of the Excelsior Band. He just gets all the music sorted out and packs all the gear for when we go away for band. Approximately five years I think my daughter joined it five years ago. Uh, now my son's in it and uh, I've never played a musical instrument in my life but both of those children are pretty talented so that's how I've become involved and haven't regretted a minute of it. It's been great. Um, I play in the two high school bands, in the town band and a couple of other bands around town when they need me. It's a, a family, a close-knit sort of a family, the, the band and I'm, I'm honoured to be part of it. Melissa's interest is in music, she's expressed that, she's got firm ideas of what she wants to do uh, with her life, conservatorium in Brisbane conceivably or, or uh, university but it'll be something to do with music. She wants to perform, it's going to be a hard battle, that, you know, a lot of people want to perform in music but it's only a few make it but she's, she's got the determination I think that she could go close if she puts her mind to it. So. It's
it's just for everyone to have fun, lose their inhibitions and it's really an amazing chance for some of the local talent to show how good they are. Hopefully we can get the 2,000 people there, yeah, but it should be good. We've got all the music and stuff and anyone who wants to play can, even if they don't play an instrument. They can just play spoons or something. So I think it'll be good for the town to get involved with, big community thing. Leading up to the event, Val Dixon, musician in residence, Tom Leach, composer, and local conductors rehearsed wherever they could in halls, school ovals, scout dens, homes for the age and backyards. For six weeks, all over Charters Towers, the famous popular tunes began to stir. No one could guess how the thing would sound when the strange cacophony of instruments and musicians finally came together. Robin Warsop. I am a member of the Brotherhood of St Barnabas. The schools are important to Charters Towers. Why it was that the education came here to North Queensland? Brother, sister, let me serve you. The schools were put here because it had a good climate. It was a place which was away from the desiccating western heat and from the enervating coastal heat. So it was a healthy climate for kids. The second thing was that it was available and you could get here to this healthy climate because of the trains. All the schools coming together meant that you had six boarding schools. Now they came here and they joined in, which means that they have a good, healthy competition. And the people, although they might fight in football field or the netball, when they go away from here, they were together in the towers. It's a different school to a, a normal school. School of the Air has given the children of North Queensland, and where else the School of the Air, a childhood. A time when they can play and be children. This is Charters Tower School of Distance Education, broadcasting on Channel 5, frequency 7530. This is Miss Whelan calling in the Jelly Ducks. Good morning, Good morning everyone. Good morning, Miss Whelan. They sit in a school situation mother or somebody looks after them. They have a teacher that they can talk to and associate. Sounds like you've been very busy out at your place this week, Stephen. Yes, the schoolroom, of course, is 250 kilometres across. It may be larger than that, but that doesn't matter. They have their own teacher and they relate to teacher. They also relate to each other. How are you today, Clint? Good, Stephen. Rachel, Stephen. Now, the whole point about isolation is just that, is that unless you've got a means of talking and meeting with people, you can't. So the School of the Air gives them a chance of having a teacher. It gives them a chance of a daily basis. It gives them a chance of talking to other children. It brings them together so that they can play together and have sports together. They can play concerts on their school of the air and they can have plays. They can do those things together on the plate so they know each other in that way.
making a beautiful sound, singing like the best, most beautiful voice you've ever heard in the world, with a beautiful R sound. That's number one. Number two, breathing real deep and driving from the middle of the body. Number three, listening, not only to yourself, but to everyone around you. You're a team. You're a team. An ensemble, you're a team. Teamwork's what it's about. Teamwork in being together, teamwork of discipline, of getting set up, teamwork of showing your best on stage, like when you sit in your chairs, sit up now, look, people are here, sit up as if the people are here right now. Ready? You all look a bit slack there. Do it. To assist local musicians, Professor Simone de Haan, Director of the Queensland Conservatorium of Music from Griffith University, Brisbane, generously volunteered to be the guest conductor of the world's greatest band. I like to do lots of different things. I love most working with the community. That's what music's about, really. A sense of bringing people together, bringing in energy. I, I think we tend to lose, I think, especially as we get further from the main city centres, is that the arts can provide the cultural heart, a sense of a heart to a community. And I think an event like this, if we use it as a trigger, then to go forward, and other projects come out of it and the life goes on, then we build the whole community. And I think that's what it is, a sense of spirit, a sense of what the community can be. So let's hope we get some uh, energy happening out of today to go on further, to see the councils uh, keep developing culture. Culture's got to be one of the central things in the identity of a, of a people. And I think that's what we need in Australia, is to build a serious culture right through mm -hmm. the whole country. I'm Steve McWilliam, the janitor of Charters Towers State High School. I do the mail run every day, the banking. Uh, I've been here about seven years. I uh, do most of the maintenance. And as you can see, I uh, wipe out the graffiti when it's time to do that. And um, Val Dixon came and approached me. She thought it'd be a good idea if we had a lot of different instruments in the band. So uh, I said I'd give it a shot. Does anyone know what a lager phone is? It's just a broomstick with nails that attach beer bottle tops onto the stick. And we're going to make a few today so that we can play it in the world's biggest band. You can make different sticks with the amount of bottle tops and... Then we get a smaller nail, put it through there. They don't have to be right in the centre, they can be anywhere because they've got to wiggle around, see? There we go. The littler sticks we'll only put about 20 on and the bigger sticks we'll probably put 30 or 36 on. That way you'll get different sounds out of the, out of the stick. I think Charters Towers is very lucky, currently anyway, that we've got some community leaders that have showed a, a great deal of vision and inspiration in, in planning for the future. And I think we as the, the residents of this area really have to get in behind them and support them in what they're doing. We have to be more diversified in our own businesses. Not only, I just can't grow cattle anymore. You try and, you do that as best you can, but there's always going to be another decline in the industry. So I have about six different enterprises within my beef enterprise. And towns are no different to that. Towns just cannot afford to be reliant on one or maybe two industries. The towns have to explore their opportunities. They have to be much more diversified and about what they want to do. There's a, certainly a lot of scope there for people with vision to be able to say, well, this is what I think we can do. Nothing is impossible. If you've got the people with the spirit and you've got the leadership and you've got people with vision there and you've got, you know, there's plenty of energy there as well, um, you can do anything. Any last takers? Come on.
in vain. The organisers hoped for a band of 2,001 people. About 800 people turned up to the showgrounds in the late afternoon to hear the Blue Danube, Beethoven's Fifth Symphony and other classics played on every imaginable instrument. Those who were there were privileged to share that special sense of place that stems from a pride in the past, feel a hope for the future and to prove to themselves that the spirit of Chartist Towers is thriving still. Firstly, to find out what the community feels it wants, and then to look at, well, how do we get projects up? How do we find funding? Start to put the seeds of pilot projects in. But I think the first thing that has to be probably tackled, and I know there's a lot of support here already from what I've heard over the last uh, half a day, uh, just in arriving, is culture has to be seen as serious and of the similar status as sport. That would be a start.